Hey everyone, it's Amber Carnes from Body Positive Yoga, and I am here today with Dana Sturdivant. Did I get that right? You did. Good. You did. Um, Dana is a registered dietitian, a nutrition therapist, and co founder of Be Nourished. And she works with clients on healing their relationship with food and developing sustainable health practices and a bunch of other stuff that we'll hear about today. And Dana's also a yoga teacher, so we have that in common. Uh, welcome and thanks for talking with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Amber. So tell us your yoga story. How did you find yoga? Why do you keep practicing? Are yoga and body image intertwined for you? That kind of stuff. Yes. Um, well, I've been practicing yoga since I was um, in graduate school. So I got started in like the late 90s. And I, um, a physical pain is what brought me to yoga. Um, I was having problems in my uh, hands and arms as a result of like computer work and tendonitis. And, um, and my massage therapist kept saying, if you went to yoga, half this stuff wouldn't even be in your body. And I was like, you know, and, and like over and over, she said this to me for about a year. And finally I went to a class and like many people, I chose the class at the gym because um, it was part of my gym membership. And I don't know how they had a Kripalu yoga teacher at the gym, <laughs> but the class I went into was a Kripalu yoga class. And this was right when yoga, you know, Madonna was doing yoga and it was kind of becoming popular, but it wasn't quite what it is today. Um, and so it wasn't a fitness oriented yoga. It was a yoga. To me, there's a difference. Yeah. Um, and I just went one Tuesday and I went back every Tuesday for like a couple of years. And what I noticed is the longer I practiced and the deeper my practice got, the, the one, the more I wanted to do it. So I just found myself like dropping down on the floor <laughs> in the home and just like doing a practice. And not necessarily with the intention of drop doing a practice, but just like I just wanted to do these moves. Um, but then, as of course, you know, while pain was what, brought me to yoga, um, there was so much more that kept me going. I just was amazed at how I felt doing yoga. Um, I was, it changed my relationship with my body. I had so much more appreciation for what my body could do. And I was less, uh, preoccupied with what it looked like, but more in, in what I like to say now is embodied. Like I was in my body and I was experiencing my body differently. And then, you know, of course, what I wanted to eat when I left class was always so different than maybe what I wanted when I went into class, like what I thought I would eat for dinner was different than what I wanted when I got out of class. And so it also changed my relationship with food to some degree. And so, yeah, while it wasn't pain was what brought me there, I started to see that there was some uh, benefit the other benefits to practicing and one was around my relationship with food and my body and then when I, I moved to Oregon I um, started working with people in more kind of what I would say more traditional weight paradigm and I just started to get really curious about how we can incorporate the mindfulness and self-acceptance practices of yoga with food and body image and weight and self-esteem and and so that's kind of where I, what drew, drew me to starting a practice that incorporates some of those as well. Yeah, very cool. <clears throat> yeah, I, you know, right now my practice is, uh, you know, I'm a Kripalu trained yoga teacher and um, I trained in 2002 and I've, for a long time I, I taught pretty regularly, but um, I, uh, I have not been teaching one in part because I travel a lot for work and I just can't commit to teaching regularly. And I was also in, in several car accidents in the last few years. And <clears throat> after my last one last March, my, my chiropractor really in, and some of my healing healers encouraged me to take, take a step away from my practice for a while because they thought it was exacerbating some of the things I was experiencing from the car accident. Mm. And so my practice um, 
is on hiatus uh, in terms of yoga in a way, but I still sit every morning and and try to at least pause and be intentional about my day. Sometimes it might be loving kindness meditation or something in the morning. There's some kind of seated pause in my day, but I wouldn't call it yoga right, right. now. <laughs> but I'm start, my body's starting to get back to a place where I can start to practice again. So I'm, I'm excited to, to get back on the mat. Awesome. Yeah. Well, um, I think it was so interesting what you said about how yoga changed your relationship with food, because I think so many of us have uh, similar experiences you did as far as um, you said the word embodiment, that we, you know, we experience our bodies differently and maybe... Whereas before, I mean, and I'll just speak for myself, you know, before, of, you know, had hated my body or was frustrated that it wouldn't do what I said or all these years or whatever. And then, you know, yoga kind of brings you back to that body that maybe you were so disconnected from. But I think the food thing that you mentioned is so interesting, like the thing you crave or want to eat when you went into class and then the thing you wanted to eat when you left class was so different. I'm going to I'm going to like do an inquiry with that uh, over the next little bit because I think that's so interesting and I want I never um made a point to kind of notice that so that that might be neat to to check out yeah um so tell us about Be Nourished um what do you do there and how do you work with people and where are you located and all that kind of yeah so Be Nourished is um a, a business that I founded co-founded with my business partner Hillary Canavy who's a licensed professional counselor and we're uh, in Portland, Oregon is where our office is located. <clears throat> and we, we actually just about 10 years ago started facilitating um, groups uh, for, for women, um, helping them heal their relationship with food and body. And back then we didn't really have a, a language. We, we kind of, when we introduce ourselves, we say it's, we've, we've ten, spent 10 years developing a language about, about this. And, um, and so we started facilitating these groups for women. They were, it used to be called, um, making peace with your body. And, um, and in facilitating these groups, we just started developing this language or this dialogue and this way of talking to people about their, their relationship with food and themselves and their bodies. Um, that's more, it's pretty counter to the, um, the current conversation in the culture about all of this and is, is founded in, in weight neutrality, mm -hmm. which certainly 10 years ago, I, I would have never even said the word weight neutrality. <laughs> um, but we, um, we now call our groups body trust wellness. And that kind of was the umbrella. we we realized after years of doing this work that body trust is the beating heart uh, behind it. And we believe body trust is your birthright. Like we believe you were born into the world with it. And there are things that happen in the course of your lifetime that take it away from you. And, um, so the services we offer people at Be Nourished are, uh, to help them cultivate and reclaim body trust. And, um, you know, after facilitating groups for about a year or so, we were, we decided to go into business together and, um, and we wanted to share a tagline and have business cards printed that looked like each other's, like looked similar. And we chose this tagline, Be Nourished. And that's where Be Nourished was born. And a couple of years ago, we, um, we became, um, you know, uh, an LLC, and so Be Nourished is our business name, but it's kind of morphed and changed over the years, and here we are now offering groups for people in Portland, as well as um, we have online programs as well, so if you're not in, in Portland area, but you're really drawn to this work based on this interview, um, you know, there's ways to work with us from all, all over the world. Very cool. So we want to hear more about um, body trust wellness. But first, I just had a question. Um, I know you said you used to work with people kind of in a traditional, uh, maybe nutrition paradigm or whatever that was very uh, maybe focused on on weight loss. And you said you never thought you'd hear yourself say that you were 
come from a weight neutral paradigm. So what helped you to make that shift um, from maybe more weight weight focused results to a more like health at every size type of approach? Yeah, when I um, when I started this business ten years ago, I knew that I didn't want to focus on weight. Um, I, although the word weight neutrality was not in my radar, like I didn't even think of it, using it as a term, but I knew that um, focusing on weight wasn't helpful. And, you know, it might be helpful to talk a little bit about my history and um, with coming to this. So um, working in a traditional paradigm as a, as a health care provider, of course, right? Like we knew dieting was, didn't work. Right. We knew that it was, um, that people tended to regain the weight when they dieted and that dieting was a harmful paradigm. So, yeah, so we were helping professionals and we believed that we were pro promoting healthy lifestyles, that we weren't encouraging dieting behaviors. But if you talk to people in the study, they were dieting. They, they were there primarily to lose weight. Um, they were restricting their food far below what we were asking them to do. You know, it was like the less is, is better mentality. Um, and... And the research showed what, what all weight loss research shows, which is that people lose weight and then they regain it and end up heavier. Yeah. And that's really not specific to the research I was doing. It, it's, it's, what, it's what we know works. Let me close my window. Um, or doesn't work, right? Yeah. And so... I just started to wonder why we were talking to people about their weight um, when it didn't seem to be helpful and it may even be harmful. And if what we were really concerned about as helping professionals is a person's health, then why don't we focus on their health and let the body decide what it's supposed to weigh? Yeah. Um, but I believe now that so many things that people do in the name of changing the size and shape of their body, they actually get in the way, their own way. Yeah. And so um, when I left that job, I discovered that there were a couple of communities out there that felt the same way. I, f I discovered the Health at Every Size movement. So I thought, okay, I'm not crazy. Mm -hmm. There are people who think like me. Um, and then I discovered Intuitive Eating, which is a book written by a couple of dietitians to help people heal from the side effects of chronic dieting and disordered eating. Right. And in that book, Intuitive Eating, they talk about the dieting mindset or the diet mentality. And when I read that book and that mentality particularly, I thought, that's it. That's that's what those participants in the research were doing. They were in the dieting mentality. We could call it whatever. You could call it mindfulness. And if you're doing it to lose weight, you're likely showing up with food and you're eating in a way that's dieting. And so to shift to a non-dieting paradigm or a weight neutral paradigm means putting our thoughts about weight on the back burner. So when people work with me, I tell them, I don't know what you're supposed to weigh. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Nobody else does either. And the statistician that made up the BMI charts doesn't know either. Right. These charts were never intended to be markers of your health. They were made for an insurance company by a mathematician. And I'm just somebody who has the nerve to tell you that I don't know what you're supposed to weigh and that I trust that your body's going to sort it out. Yeah. So tell us about uh, what does body trust wellness mean and... Um Maybe what's a favorite body trust story from somebody that you've worked with? Um. Yeah, so body trust wellness is um, kind of the umbrella for all of our programs now. And, and I said earlier that we really believe that body trust is the beating heart behind this approach. And, um, and I mentioned that we believe you were born into this world with, like when you come into the world, you don't like, 
you don't you know when you're hungry and you know when you're full and you know what you like and you know what you don't like and you don't have a lot of strong judgments about that but somewhere along the way things get hijacked and this trusting relationship is is taken and for many of our clients particularly young women um uh, this this starts by the age of 10. So somewhere around the age of 10, by the age of 10, they get the message that there's something wrong and they start to mess with food. And so Body Trust Wellness is kind of the umbrella for the programs because it really is a matter of trust. And we have five core competencies that we focus on. The first one is weight neutral self-care. So we believe in self-care for the sake of self-care, and we promote self-care simply because all bodies benefit from good self-care. And we believe that telling, you know, one of my de big, biggest pet peeves as a dietitian is when I hear somebody at a party say to a smaller bodied individual, you're so lucky you can eat whatever you want. <laughs> and that's kind of, we're, we're living in a culture that tends to send the message that if you're in a larger body, you have to really watch it and pay attention. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a smaller body, you're lucky. Yeah. And it sends the wrong message because we all benefit from good self-care. Thin people smoke. Um, thin people are sedentary. Some larger people are sedentary, right. but that we cannot tell by looking at someone what they're doing. And so we, we, we promote weight neutral self-care. Mm -hmm. The uh, second core competency is intuitive eating. So internally directed eating. So much of the dieting paradigm and even my field of nutrition experts, we tend to, you know, when people know about food, they tend to be up in their head about food and how much, how, what time is it? How many calories is in it? What's the right choice? Yeah. And intuitive eating is about bringing you home to your body and, and reconnecting to all the ways you were born into this world to regulate your food intake. Mm -hmm. The third one is to move your body joyfully. So, so much of the movement that we participate in this culture is for cosmetic reasons. Yeah, it's punitive, right? <laughs> yeah, and it's compensatory and it's to make up for things and... Mm -hmm. The majority of people at the gym are there for cosmetic reasons. You know, can I get rid of, how do I get rid of this? <laughs> and, um, and movement is so beneficial metabolically. Mm. And so our focus is on metabolic fitness, not on cosmetic fitness. And, and finding way, you know, we get rid of the rules of what counts. Yeah. And, how, and we just get moving mm -hmm. and we notice how it makes us feel and we find joyful ways to move not punitive. The fourth one is um, core competency is nurturing self-compassion. So this idea of how you talk to yourself mm -hmm. when, when you're struggling and, um, and developing a, 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 an, a capacity to look at your behaviors and your patterns with kindness and compassion and, and from a place of curiosity, which is so consistent with this idea of the witness and yoga, right? Yeah, like definitely. This witness consciousness um, and, and starting to become aware of how you talk to yourself about what you do. We believe that what you say and think about what you do is so much more harmful than what you actually do. Yeah. And so... Um, self-compassion is a huge piece of this. Um, there's a quote that says, you cannot hate yourself into a version of yourself that you love. But boy, when it comes to our bodies, this is how we're approaching it. Right. And then the last core competency is, is redefining success. So if our weight and our size and our shape is no longer how we judge success and this myth of willpower right. and being in control, um, then how do we define success? How do we know it's working? Yeah. Well, you know, when you talk about six, um, I don't know if you called it success stories or, but clients, when they come here, they find freedom. Mm -hmm. They um, are, have, have the ability to let go of, of what they believe are their mistakes in eating, that mm -hmm. they don't turn into a binge or you know, so many of the people we work with tend to, you know, go from dieting to what I call the effort plan. Right. And they go from being overly restrictive 
to super permissive. Yeah, I know that it's like pretty common for people that go from dieting to health. Whatever. I mean, I definitely had that experience when I first did that. It's like, mm -hmm. I remember reading um, one of Janine Roth's books where she talks about intuitive eating and, and being like, oh, okay, sweet. Like, then I could just eat bread and olive oil all day. Like, that's no big deal. And then, you know, it's kind of the, that pendulum swings, right? When we, when we are embedded in that dieting mentality that you were talking about. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, some of our clients come to us where they tend to say no, mm. to food, no, and other clients come to us where, yes, yes, to everything, mm -hmm. and we talk, you know, so if you've been saying no, of course you're going to say yes yeah. to everything, and, and then if you've been saying no, or yes, you, you, you but there's a balance yeah. between us when it comes to self-care, mm -hmm. and um, being more in tune with hunger and fullness. Um, metabolic fitness, just feeling better, just your sleep improving, your blood sugar better, being better, your heart rate improving, your blood pressure. These are the how we judge success. And that's really what our clients find is a real freedom in this, um, where they feel more trusting of themselves around food mm -hmm. and um, feel more in tune with what's going on for their bodies and they're, they're able to differentiate between physical hunger and emotional hunger. Yeah, it's a, it's a super important skill to have and, yeah. a, and a tough one to, to develop. I think it takes a long time. Um, yeah. Some people watching this video are thinking about going on another diet. Uh, what would you say to them? Um, I would say first and foremost, if you've been on diets and they haven't worked for you, which chances are, um, if you're thinking about going on a diet, it's probably another diet. Right. Um, is that it's not your fault, the failures. It's so not your fault. This is a 95, this is a multi-billion dollar industry with a 95% failure rate. Yeah. And this diet and fitness industry has a it has a shit ton of money to lose if we start to reject this paradigm. Um, but if, you know, this, this dieting cycle that you've probably found yourself in um, is not your fault. It's what happens. It promotes this thinking. And when you lose weight and, and then you're, you go on a diet and you lose weight and then you get sick of the diet. So you go off the diet and you regain the weight and then you want to lose weight and then you pick the diet. This cycle promotes the thinking that there's something wrong with you, that you have no willpower, um, and, and that you just need to try harder. Right. And I'm pretty sure you've tried hard. <laughs> yeah. I don't know anybody that's, you know, been in the diet culture thing that, that doesn't know everything there is to know about nutrition and exercise and calories and all of that stuff. Like, we know too much. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's not, that's in my bio. I don't know if you read my bio, but it says that I most of the people that come to see me know way too much about food and eating. Right, it's not right. a knowledge. Mm -hmm. And if behavior change was driven by information, we would live in an extremely healthy. Nobody would smoke, and everybody would floss their teeth every day. And it's just it's behavior change is driven by motivation. Mm -hmm. And um, and so. This cycle, this dieting cycle of failing and then going on another diet has likely led you to believe that there's something wrong with you and that it's your fault and that you just need to try harder. And we, we know from experience that you're, it's just, you're just going to end up in the same place again. Yeah. Chances are. And so we encourage you to try different instead of harder. And to maybe, you know, one place to start might be to just get the intuitive eating book mm. and read the first chapter or two, because most people feel like these, these writers were in their heads when they wrote this book that diet and, and to, that dieting is harm. It's a harmful paradigm. It, it, it's, it, it has harmful effects on your relationship and over time, um, it becomes harder and harder to follow a diet. If that resonates for you at all, um, then I encourage you to try something different instead of harder, to save your money, to not give Jenny Craig your money again. Or money again. I mean, these, these people depend on you 
to come back. They know you'll be back because they depend on you for, for business, but it's not your fault. And, um, and looking into intuitive eating, or maybe like we have a free downloadable workbook if you sign up for a newsletter mm. that asks you a lot of really good questions about this and helps you, um, to, to me, it's like helps you keep your lens wide when you look at all this. Yeah. And it might help you reframe some things to and, and, and give you a place to kind of start different. Mm. Definitely. Yeah, I've, I've downloaded the workbook and it is, it's an amazing exercise to do. Um, I, I really enjoyed looking through that and I, I've, I've worked some similar, um, you know, self inquiry type stuff before. And, it, and it's, it's, I think it's powerful to do no matter where you are in your kind of uh, journey on, on uh, whether you're still dieting or way over here at, you know, intuitive eating. Um, so I'll definitely link to a place where, uh, folks can sign up for that newsletter and get a copy of that. Um, cause I, I thought it was very helpful. So, oh, yeah. um, tell us what you have coming up that you're excited about or that folks can participate in. Yeah. So we have, um, well, we're here in Portland, Oregon. So if you're, you know, in the Portland area, um, we certainly have a 14 week group that you could participate in. Um, it's going to be starting on March 31st. We actually are putting in a, an, a proposal at Kripalu Center for Yoga and Health. We're hoping maybe to have a retreat there in the coming months. And then the probably the biggest thing for your viewers is our, um, our um, e-course. It's called No More Waiting with, you know, women women put their lives on hold for a long time and and wait you know women wait to dress themselves in comfortable clothing that makes them feel beautiful we 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 wait in all kinds of ways so our e-course is called no more waiting and it's an exploration of body trust wellness and the next one um I was going to pull it up here. I think it starts in April. Yeah, it starts April 6th and it runs for 6 weeks. And that would be an opportunity to do this work in an, in an online forum, um, which could be particularly helpful for your clients. Great. I will. Uh, I'll definitely link to that in the in the post where I share this video. Um, well, thank you for talking with us today. What would be one uh, last parting gift, parting piece of body positive advice that you would give uh, anyone who's watching? Oh, one piece. So so hard. It's like don't get me started. Oh, you can give more than one if you want. Um, uh, I would say your body is not the problem. Hmm. Your body's not the problem. It's never been the problem, and it's really not the problem. And when you want to say your body's the problem, I would encourage you to keep the lens wide. Because chances are there's other stuff going on, and this is just really distracting from what's really happening. But your body's not the problem. It's never been. And try different. Try different, not harder. Awesome. Thank you so much uh, for all your wisdom and for your time today. And um, folks can learn more about Dana and the work that she does at benourished.org. Yeah? That's all right. Yep. Yeah. And I will link to the e-course and to the, the workbook and all the different things that we talked about today at bodypositiveyoga.com. So thank you, Dana, and uh, we'll see you online. Thank you.